Okay, I don't have a whole lot of time to get ready, but hi, hello, how are ya? I am getting ready for an event called the Broken Glass Awards. I have to talk and get ready because I figured I would vlog this, but like I don't have like all the time in the world. But my friend Melissa is getting the Humanitarian Award because she's just amazing. So in supporting her and I'm gonna try to vlog it and you know, capture memories like I love to do. That's what I'm getting ready for. It's like a business casual type of thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna get ready and I will see you later. Okay, so we're all ready for the Broken Glass Awards. Um, this is the outfit. I'm not exactly sure where this any of this is from. I know that my bralette, I believe, is from from Victoria's Secret. This is, I am so cute. Hey, hey. Okay, um, just like a really cute bralette with a sheer white top and a really cute pencil skirt and then these really cute shoes that I got from Forever 21 because where else would I get my clothes? <laughs> okay, so um, I really have to go now, but I will see you when we get there, or I get there.
here for baking. It's very bright. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, but thank you. Um, it's quite an honor to be expecting this in my hometown. And so many people who helped support me present here tonight. Um, today. <laughs> um, but thank my parents and my drama teacher, Jay Kessler, um, who both sort of helped to cultivate my, my interest in the arts from a very young age. Um, it's also an honor and very refreshing to be a part of an award ceremony that focuses on women recognizing each other's achievements, especially in a society and an industry specifically that profits and encourages us to view each other as threats and as competition. Um, so it's, it's wonderful and refreshing to see women celebrating each other's achievements and uplifting each other. Thank you. We're both nerds, they sing on the Twenty years later, you can say I know my friends pretty well. I know she's always been awful at self-promotion and never makes a fuss about any of the things she does. Like the kids say nowadays, she makes moves in seconds. So when she had, she casually texted me, yo, I'm getting an award on November 4th, please get a winner, will you be down? I thought, this must be some small work thing. And then I Googled it. And I learned that she was getting this award. I thought, Lily? A diva? Wow. <laughs> the Lily I know is humble and down to earth. But when I learned this award goes to a woman who has broken through glass ceiling in the film industry, it makes sense. This, that, that's my girl Lily, breaking things. Especially barriers. She's evolved from a feisty kid who randomly referenced movies to a talented, fiery woman who still randomly references movies and makes life more fun for the people around her. It is my great pleasure to introduce the 2019 Death of Diva Award recipient to my best friend, Lily Lovius. Oh, so cool. I have no um, thank you, Abby. Um, a lot of people think that Abby and I are sisters because we share last name and we're brown. Um, <laughs> um, but I think we might as well say we are because you all like my sister, Abby. And she's like a whole day off work and she really should have because she works like 10 minutes from here. So I know she's pretty cool to me. Um, I'm going to my pleasure to know what her friends for. Excuse me, Abby. <laughs> Um, it's such an honor to be with all of you guys here. Um, it's an even greater honor to be um, receiving this amazing award and to be something of such extraordinary women um, actors that it feels very foreign to me because I'm much more used to being on the other side of the awards uh, for our my day job at the film festival. So it's a little bit weird, um, but it feels really good. So thank you. <laughs> um, I want to thank Kim Walter and the three of you guys. And everyone at Teamstrips, yes, thank you so much for, um, for championing this, and, and you said it you know, earlier, um, championing this idea that within our industry it's okay to nurture each other, it's so special. Um, I'm, uh, I've always been such a big fan of, I mean, I've always been a little bit of a workaholic, and so I value hard work, but I think um, equally important and something that's not talked about enough are the people around us who um, empower us and encourage us to do the work that we can do. And so I have to have to thank Mr. Hill Maxner, the person who gave me my job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's, uh, you gave me, you decided to give a job, a really big job, three years ago to, uh, three years ago, and then again earlier this year, remember you gave me a promotion, to um, a homegrown Latina, which is not the obvious choice. So that, your example, and this award, um, it's going to be a reminder to me that it's my job to do the same thing, to empower, to nurture, and to support the people around me. Um, I want to thank my beautiful family who never comes to stuff. <laughs> The Exorcist when I was like five years old. <laughs> they also knew about other family favorites like Jaws and Bambi, which are all equally scarring. So thank you for putting me on this path. Those little creatures, I love. 
um, a second family of my colleagues at Palm Springs Film Society. Yeah, also pretty funny because uh, we're so eager to that one right now. But use me again, it's fine. <laughs> Any chance we get to dress up. Um, I want to thank especially Yuga Lewis Woodford who let me work at the festival season. I'm hosting it. Thank you so much, Yuga. Um, and I'm going to end this by just letting you know that I love them. I, draw, I get to work with movies. How cool is that? Um, but I especially love that I get to work in an industry that does stuff like this. And I love working with movies, but I love being a part of this community so much more. So thank you all so, so much. And um, go to the film festival, you hear in three. There are tickets on my I followed the directions and said they had a girl on the right side of the stage. Um, <laughs> let me introduce you to my name, to our third of us. First, her name, back then, Melissa was a very rare name. But I had read the Columbus Storrells, Alexandria and Fritek, which every driver should read. And I fell in love with the name of Melissa. In those days, the father wasn't in the delivery room as much. So when my wife came out and I approached her, she said, You have me, Melissa. I wasn't in the delivery room once before for myself, and I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to give up the free bread and food. Melissa is amazing because if you knew her back then, you would never in a million years imagine her being today. She was extremely shy. So shy that when we brought her to the mall and went there to sit on Santa Claus's lap, she would scream so loud and so piercing a scream that the entire mall would freeze. <laughs> Melissa had the uh, Fortune or unfortunate uh, life of living with a father who was an author and a teacher. I taught in the school from which I had graduated with the teachers that taught me. And years later, I was to become one of my students, as did my son. The reason is that there was a small school, K-12, was about 1150 people. I was chairman of the English department, director of dramatics, audio visual coordinator, wrestling coach, soccer coach, and a wild summer school principal, so my kids thought I ran the place. It must have been terrifying, but she was still very shy, and when she came to my class, I was the one, only one that was teaching uh, certain classes because of was small and I asked her to read, she would not read, she didn't want to read. And I'd say, well, you're not getting the car tonight today, or you can't use your phone to read. That's what you're talking about. One of the things that I did, though, was uh, go to the dramatics. So it's kind of apropos that she's here in the film. Because I was directing the school plays, and I had her in Fiddle on the Roof. I had her as Lucy in Dracula where the kid playing Dracula got someone to his party and literally bit her in the neck. And then um, when I left, she played the lead role in Meet Cole's Archer. So she was into dramatics, and that brought her out of the shyness. But we never had an idea just how far out she had been brought. She didn't want to leave New York when we moved here. And I literally went back to New York to see her, and we went to a supermarket, and we saw the parking lot was strewn with garbage, plastic bottles, paper everywhere. And I had just come from Palm Springs, where the shopping market is almost pristine. And I said, listen, you don't want to come to California, you don't want to come back here. And sure enough, that's what happened. She came to California, she got into, a, uh, into a program to get her Teacher's certificate. She taught for over 20 years here in the Valley. And while she was teaching, uh, she was thinking about and working with charities. We had no idea just how much she was doing. This year, the year before, the year before that, it was truly amazing to see her raising this money, 
bringing people in and into visit security awards so such a successful Gator event. So, I know Melissa's dream. She dreams that the monster who victimizes the young and the helpless will someday be a victim himself. I'm so proud, I love you so proud, to present our girl, Melissa Hunter. Pull off a fundraiser to try and save a young girl's life. 
You've not only shown me what a stranger's kindness can do, but you brought me a group of friends I now can't imagine my life without. This one's for you. My cousin Abby and to all my friends here tonight, thank you for holding my hand, working with me on every fundraiser I can't say no to, and for showcasing the meaning of friendship. This award is for all you. For Patty Gelly Caruso, who encouraged me to pursue my dream of wanting to be a talk show host, who was always lending me advice and cheering me on. This one's for you, honey. For Denise DeBerry Kay, who always greeted me with a smile, who every time I would see her would say something that warmed my heart, built me up, who exemplified kindness. This one's for you, honey. Kim, thank you for your show of faith by nominating me for this honor and helping me to hold on to the confidence I needed to get through all I do and plan to continue. Catherine and Harold, thank you for being my mentors and being there every time I need advice. This one's for you. I am blessed to have this beautiful community supporting me in my commitment to the American Cancer Society, Desmond Strong Foundation, Act for MS, Keisha D. Scholarship, and so many others. For those of you who are part of Palm Springs Women in Film TV, and thank you for putting your words into action. For those who are gifted by their efforts, remember you are the main character of your life story. Show your audience what it is to be both compassionate and tough, kind but driven, and leave them with something to be inspired by. This award represents all of you who have given me a life worth living. But I'm keeping it at my house. <laughs> Um, I'm so pleased to be here to present uh, the Broken Glass Award to my mom, Dolores Robinson. Uh, I could not think of a more aptly titled award than Broken Glass. Uh, I just love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so, Melissa, yes. The answer is yes. I, I ran my mother out. <laughs> Set up a little lease program with you. Yeah, she's awesome and she's always stolen all my friends. So if we were friends, she would have stolen you from me. And now we are, so she would. Um, but I just want everyone to know how proud I am of my mom. Um, you know, just briefly, I mean, her, her, her legacy and her resume is something that just goes on and on and on. But just briefly, suffice it to say that she is audacious. You know, she got audacity, and in a way that none of us know where she got it from. We think she was hatched. <laughs> Why? Because she grew up with a mother who who didn't encourage her, and who, God bless my grandmother, but she just she didn't encourage my mother. She had a whole other way of raising children, and yet my mom was able to have the audacity to think that she could create a different life and rebrand her life to a page one rewrite of her life at a time when everyone thought she was crazy. So we were living back in Philadelphia in the 70s. My mom was married to my dad at the time, who was the original Gordon on Sesame Street. Y'all may remember him. Yep, and then Sesame Street just celebrated 50 years, so it's, it's a whole lifetime. Um, but while things were great on Sesame Street, they weren't so great on our street at home, because my mom and my dad were straight up. So my mom decides she's gonna hop in her Volvo, um, and throw my brother Matt, who's here, and myself in the back of the Volvo, and drive to California from Philly. She knew like one and a half people in California. <laughs> we had two nickels to rub together, maybe three. Um, she she left behind. I always have to put the kids. You know, I gotta give the mother the guilt. She left behind her family dog. <laughs> As a mom now, I understand. She had things to do, right? She, had, she was hustling. She didn't have time for a dog to cross country, but at the time, at nine years old. And then, as we were driving right through this desert over here, she decided to drop off my hamster. <laughs> she said it was for a better life. <laughs> and every time I come to Palm Springs, I'm going to put the hamster. <laughs> 
in the back of your mom's car and she was driving like, you know, pedal to the metal trying to get to this new life. And she was doing it for us. We had a, a guardian angel along the way who I always love to shout out. He passed away many years ago named Cleavon Little. He was in Blazing Saddles, you know, yeah. Sheriff Bart, iconic man. And he gave us, or gave my mom, her first leg up out in LA. He invited her out to stay at his house. And he had a house in Malibu on the beach. That was good, right? And Matt and I got to Malibu. We were like, okay, this is our new life. A whole different thing. So just audacity to think that she could do, everybody really thought she was crazy, right? But the fact that she was able to, to reinvent herself in her mind or wish for something bigger. And then she ended up working on the desks at, uh, at agencies. And she had a client named LeVar Burton who, well, actually she was just on the phone, on the desk, right? She convinced Lamar to go with her, and that was the beginning of her management career. And then after that came uh, Martin Sheen, I had to look at the list, because some of these I forgot. Pierce Brosnan, Howie Mandel, you know, Neil Estes, Michael Clark Duncan, and Wesley Snipes, and Elizabeth Shue, Powers Booth, and of course, me. <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> Right, and she did this reinvention, and it's so phenomenal to see the things that she was able to do. Nobody looked like her in the time that she was in these rooms, um, and she was constantly busting through glass ceilings. So I am so proud today, along with my brother Matt and his wife Cindy and the son RJ and all of our friends here at Table Five, to present to you the Broken Glass Award winner, Dolores Robinson. <laughs> what a way to welcome a girl to college friends. I moved here. I live here. In hot weather. Which I found out wasn't so easy. But if you live here in hot weather, one of the things you should get to know is the weather man. <laughs> so who's sitting at my table? Brian Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> But everybody in the room who knows me knows one thing about me. I talk too much. <laughs> I, in order to keep you and allow you to go home and live your lives, <laughs> I have my monitors. My son, Matt, over there, and my daughter, Holly, who's all too anxious to tell me, Mom, shut up, you're talking too much. <laughs> I, we were doing this reality series called For Pete's Sake for Oprah Winfrey, and when she canceled us, I got in my car, drove to Palm Springs, and said, I'm going to live here. I like it here. <laughs> and I was here for like two weeks before a channel called the Hallmark Channel decided, we like that show. Let's call it another name. Meet the Beats and put it back on the air. So for a year, so for a year, I a year and a half, I drove myself back and forth to LA to do that show. Now I'm gonna say something right now while I'm saying that I drove a year and a half. I love, I'm the girl that you could be standing behind in Ralph's, and she will find any reason to turn around and tell you that she's 83 years old. <laughs> Yeah, 
older people, my senior citizens, my group. Now, Holly and Matt, my son sitting here in the audience, and my lovely, lovely grandson, R.J. Pete. Don't let your mother embarrass herself. <laughs> let these people go home. <laughs> Because you are willing to stand here and tell 100 more stories about your life and your achievements. But the one thing that I have to say is the thing that I was really good at, I love the fact that I, I had people that I took up to Academy Award nominations, etc., etc. I think the thing that I did best was I was really had some skill about picking the right kind of people, because it was never really me, it was always them. And it was me with my big mouth behind them, but it was always them with the talent. So here I am in Palm Springs, my little home. I love it here. I'm so happy to be living here, and I'm so thankful that you guys really found me whatever enough to give me this wonderful award. Thank you so much. Virginia Madsen is an actor and a good friend of mine, Mr. Tristan Rogers. Hey, thank you. You know, it's great to do an event like this where you, you, you get to work with and honor people that whose work you really respect and love. And no more is that reflected today than uh, the recipient of the General Award. The General Award, uh, apart from being uh, the award, the, the classic award for uh, female achievement in film, also reflects versatility. And to get this award, you kind of have to do that. You, you've got to reflect that in your body of work over time. And this lady definitely has a fine body of work which is going to stand the test of time long after me. Uh, movies that stand out for me personally, Sideways, a great homage to Weinberg. When I first saw this, this movie, the first thing I thought was, you know, there's something missing here. Oh yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> and uh, my wife always, always said, you never needed an excuse to have a drink. Uh, but it was a, a movie that just lent itself to having a glass of red wine. No question. Uh, other movies which were a standout, Rain Man, Candy Man, or Rain Maker, Candy Man, uh, number 23, I could go on for an hour or all day really don't want that. So we're going to get right to the point of the issue. I'd like to present the Jenna Award to Virginia Madsen.
Uh, and not that we had it easy before, because she was paid a quarter of the price that the men were paid for the same job. It's kind of the same thing right now. But I was like, Mom, yeah, because I'm going to be an actress, so I sort of needed to know how to be a starving artist. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yes, for following your passion, which she always told me that I should do. And it was, yes, it was very hard. He moved three times in one year. But she made a success of it for no money. Um, freelancing. And, but she taught me that you must follow your dream. It, it, it doesn't matter about the money or the level of success. You must follow your dream. And I watched her struggle and I was so proud of her when we got does anybody remember the generic food that came in black and white boxes? Uh, yeah. 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 And I want to I want to talk about Dolores, who, in her clip, said, "I love I love attention." <laughs> so glad you're here with your daughter, and you know, and your family. But why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we demand it? And, you know, I grew up as one of those little girls who, on my report card, it said, too bossy, <laughs> too loud. And I thought I was a leader. <laughs> I probably was. <laughs> but my mom, and how your mom was like, yes, you are. And yes, you can. And my mom did that for me. And as I got into the entertainment industry, if you had an opinion as a young girl, God, it was like all they wanted you to do was shut up and just, you know, be grateful you got hired. <laughs> and, and someone asked me today about, you know, did I break through the glass ceiling? And I said, no, the ceiling's still there. And it's going to be there. So like my mom said, Build another house without a roof. Stand up and make your voice heard, even if you didn't like it. Yeah. And, and my last point that I want to make is that one of the things that we must do as now I'm, in, I'm considered the older actress. <laughs> I'm proud of that. One of the things that we must do is reach out our hand to our younger counterparts. They, them, male, whatever they identify as. Let's reach out to them. Bring them through the front door and say, yes, you can. You can succeed. And you can be who you are. Because we're going to be here on the other side of that door, and we're going to kick it down for you. Well, actually, maybe you already have kicked it down. <laughs> right, Dolores? And how's my mom do? And, and so we'll do that for them and they'll come through, and they won't have a glass ceiling. There'll, there'll be no ceiling. This is a glass slipper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> and 
anyway, I don't think she would need it to fit. She <laughs> Thank you all so much. Okay, hi, how are ya? I'm back from the Broken Glass Awards. It was really, really fun, great, great time. We all went out to eat. You can't even see me. We all went out to get drinks after at 849. Oh, and now I have to go to work and I really, really, really don't want to. But my outfit was so cute. Thank you, Morai, for ruining that clip. Yeah, so now I, I have to stop procrastinating and I just want to take a nap. So yeah, that was my vlog for the Broken Glass Awards. Congratulations to everyone that won. Congratulations to my friend Melissa because she's amazing. Congratulations to everyone and thank you to my friend Kim for letting me go, for inviting me, and I'll see you guys in my next vlog. Bye.